I'm Walter Smith. I've been in Wilton since 1946 permanently. Uh, family have been here many more years before that. Uh, <clears throat> and I have done extensive work for the Wilton Historical Society. We, we are now in one of our buildings. It's the Abbott Barn. <clears throat> it's one of, the, one of five buildings that make up the complex of the Wilton Historical Society Museum. Adjacent to the barn is a blacksmith shop. Both of them were owned by <clears throat> George Abbott. Uh, the barn is about 1860. The uh, blacksmith shop was uh, about 1900. They were <clears throat> George Abbott happened to be one of my uncles. He also was a blacksmith. It is a, stood originally up on Hurlbut Street, just south of the Hurlbut Street School. In about 1990, we had the opportunity to save it from the Wreckers Ball and dismantled both buildings and moved them to this uh, present site on new foundations. Keeping in mind that the exterior was to look as close to the original as we could make it. And I uh, hope we have achieved that. To make the barn more useful <clears throat> and, and represent uh, the lifestyle in Wilton and particularly this area, I have collected uh, tools for the last 50 years and I have now assembled and, and displayed here in this barn about 600 tools that represent the different trades and crafts and tasks that were uh, necessary to exist in Wilton and, and the early farms of the 18th and 19th century. They're grouped into panels that show the different trades, uh, like ice making, or ice harvesting rather, uh, wood sawing, and all of the trades that basket making and we'll get into it a little later, how, how we accomplish this. And uh, as you go through the two lofts that they are housed in, I think it will tell a story of all the crafts that were needed to exist in places like Wilton in the 18th and 19th century. One of the tools that are, or d devices such as that I'm sitting on is called a shaving horse. It's used by many different trades uh, from basket making, wheel, wheel rights, uh, <clears throat> coopering, making barrels, uh, making handles, uh, that was it. But it's really a tool you would really find or a device uh, that you'd find on the farm and one of the real functions of it is to make wooden pegs that <clears throat> are, that hold a barn together, such as this Abbott barn. And one of the things that, that you use to uh, make pegs was this draw knife. Uh, a draw knife was a, a great fun tool to use. To, uh, to make pegs or, or any shape that you wanted. In. But you can see it <clears throat> by turning it and working the corners off, you start to get your round peg. <clears throat> Not only uh, did the barn builders use this uh, tool, this device, but also as I say, many other trades. One of the uh, things we tried to do was to uh, <clears throat> identify different makers as well as use. And one of the big tool makers in the area that were manufactured was uh, G.W. Bradley in Weston, Connecticut. This happens to be another draw knife that would be used uh, 
for making uh, masts on a, a ship so that you got a, a broader, uh, <clears throat> broader handle so that your hands wouldn't hit the wood. Uh, Bradley made an extensive line of, uh, of edge tools. Here's one of his, one of his design <clears throat> in a broad axe for hewing timber. Uh, was made in Western Connecticut. And Bradley uh, was in business from about <clears throat> 1835 to about the turn of the century, 1900. And then it burned down on, was on Lyons Plains Road in Weston. The dam is still there. You had to have a good ax for first clearing land and, and then as the axes started to develop, uh, they were used, uh, of course, the trade axe was traded with the Indians. This is a very early shingle hat, shingle hatchet, and uh, there are many other kinds of axes, uh, like the broad axe. In, in that panel, there's adz, there's adz that do timber cutting. This is called an adz. This, is, this was used for finishing lumber finishing timber. It was swung like a hoe and it has a cutting edge. It was used extensively in shipyards for making wooden ships. This is a Cooper's hand adze. It, it was used uh, to, to shape the, the inside of the barrel staves. The Cooper was an important person in the, in the community because he made the containers that was used for all transportation of a dry, was a dry cooper and a wet cooper. The wet cooper made the barrels for the liquid, the molasses, the ciders, the, all of the things that had to be tight. Ice harvesting was a big industry from about 1830 to, to, the, coming, to the coming of refrigeration of 1900. At, and uh, one of the companies in, in, in the area, <clears throat> Branchville Ice Tools, made tongs like this. They made, uh, they made a, a pike pole for moving the ice through the canal of the uh, <clears throat> pond and to the ice house. We have, in our display, we have a picture of uh, Dick Umstead getting ice in 1923 off of the uh, Hemoskemp Pond and pulling it in with a horse. And so we know uh, it was a industry that went on into the 30s. And as I say, with the coming of refrigeration and the, and the need for ice because of the urban development, people needed refrigeration. And so the early refrigerator was an ice box. It was called a refrigerator, but was uh, stocked with ice from the local ponds. One of the other real uh, industries in Wilton was uh, sawmills. Hickok uh, Sawmill <clears throat> was located on the Comstock Brook behind the Congregational Church. It was established in about 1730. Shortly after that, they built a grist mill on the opposite bank. The sawmill was a an <clears throat> was what is known as a framed. Uh, up and down saw, so the, the saw basically went vertically. And if you look at a board that came out of the sawmill, the, 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 you can tell the vertical saw marks that are absolutely perpendicular to the board and it, not always quite evenly spaced, but parallel. Bradley Hull, of the forge made uh, hubs and uh, wagon wheels were made up there for ox cart and he, he operated a uh, forge about 1852. Uh, so it was very important to have the wheel and we have a good display of wheel making. One of the things that uh, 
that was important was boring a hole for either building barns or, and the earliest of, uh, where it was a wooden brace with either a, a screw bit, but all made of wood with, a, with what they call a double crank. The first of the bits were, were what is known as a T-handled auger. And they, they drilled the bigger holes and they're much slower uh, in bidding. This is known as a, a nose auger bit. This is a forerunner to all of the twist augers. So this, this would be the first of, of bits that were used to drill holes. And it only, only drilled on that very cutting edge at the very bottom and that's known as a no nose auger cylinder bit. One of the operations that are, was so important was your gathering of crops, and hay was one of the big crop that was used for most animals for feed and, and bedding and many other uses. And the, when you gathered hay and put it into a mound, one of the difficulties was to get it out later. So they developed through the years what is known as a hay saw. This hay saw was a Connecticut pattern, and it's used like a saw and plunged into the stack to cut out a chunk of hay uh, for feeding your animals, because it, it was very difficult to take a pitchfork and get, get the hay out. One of the important operations was saddle making, harness making, and horse collar making. You, and you realize that without a harness, you, had, you couldn't hook your animal to the load. Likewise, without a yoke, ox yoke, your, your oxen could not work without a yoke, to something to hook the load to. This is a harness maker's uh, vise, and it's caught up this way, and you stitch your, your harness together. Also, there was another little tricky end to a harness that had a round end, and this went through another little uh, hole, and it was shaped into what's called a, ro a, rain, a rain rounder, and it's sewed together in the back. Can, so it goes from a flat, flat harness to a round rein hooked onto the horse's nose. Hat making. Hat makers uh, was a big industry in, in this area. And this is a hat mold. The felt was shaped over this with the rim, and the, the felt was shaped over, and this is a tool that was used to cut the rim. It's called a rim cutter, and it followed, followed the shape of the, uh, the hat and, and, and cut the rim. There were many hat makers that were here in Wilton, so the early hat makers, this is more of a Norwalk, Danbury was the center of hat making with thousands of people working in the industry in the 20th century. Next panel we have up there is, is shoemaking. And we have, we are fortunate to have tools from one of our Wilton shoemakers, George Davenport. We have his workbench. We have some of his wooden lasts that he made individual shoes. And this is, a, this is a typical shoemaker's hammer. Now the way the wooden last was, was designed for the individual foot, and he would have hundreds of these, maybe George didn't, but others did, because this, you wrapped the leather around, nailed it in here temporarily, and and then pulled it out of the, out of the leather and then sewed the sole or, or, 
on the bottom. The whole area was really at one time big in making shoes. We, in the uh, statistics in 1850 in Wilton showed there was 155 shoemakers on the, on the census in 1850. My purpose in collecting tools is first to look back and see where we came from, not to live in the past, but we have to get back to learn how to work with our hands and how important it is that a tool is an extension of your hand and to do a task. And uh, today we use a computer, which is fine for the modern generation, but it doesn't produce anything much more than paper and information. The old tools are, have a great romance to me because I was brought up in the building business. Uh, my father was there in 1922 and we had old craftsmen that made windows and did handwork and I had got to a great appreciation of, uh, <clears throat> of building and, and how, how things went together. I myself was a builder for 60 some years so it's helped me through the years to understand how to put things together. And I find that uh, first things come first. So you need a shovel to dig a hole to put it, and then you need a, a hammer and a saw to build, put the boards and a shovel to uh, mix cement. So you realize that nothing can be done physically without the knowledge of how to use tools. Well, as you can see, the tools have represented <clears throat> the different trades and crafts that, that uh, were performed in the, in the Wilton area. Uh, I think that it gives an overview of how you had to have these tools and a barn like this to contain your crops and store your grains. Uh, your equipment, your wagon, the barn became as necessary as a house, really, as your survival in the 18th and 19th century, uh, because you depended so much on the animal, the horse, the oxen, and they had to be properly housed. And this was the kind of barn, uh, typical hay barn that was in Wilton in Fairfield County and in general. Uh, in this area. So uh, I hope we have shown <clears throat> the different trades we have in our different uh, exhibits. We have 32 different uh, <clears throat> examples of handcrafted as well as manufactured tools.